Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Skelton and I am the pastor at Dogwood Prayer United Methodist Church as well as Seed Chapel United Methodist Church in Oblong, Illinois and it's a blessing to be able to join you wherever you are and whatever you may be doing for this message. I want to begin by simply saying thank you for tuning in to this message. Whether you're, you're tuning in the day that it is posted, a couple days later, several weeks later, it doesn't matter when or where or what time you decide to join this message. All that matters is that God has led you to this message for a specific reason. And I pray today that that reason shine through from the words that he has given me to share with each and every one of you. So thank you for taking the time to, to join this message. And I certainly pray that there is something from this message that makes you a better disciple today than what you were yesterday. I like to start my video messages simply by reminding all of us that the word of God is limitless. There, you can't contain the Word of God. You can't just set aside the Word of God for a Sunday morning or Sunday afternoon or a Sunday evening. The Word of God is meant for every day of the week. It's, it's meant to be embraced, experienced, and embodied on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and back to Sunday and continuing, continuing after that. The Word of God is meant to be embodied, experienced, and embraced every day of the week, every week of the month, every month of the year, and every year of your life. The Word of God cannot be contained. So again, it doesn't matter when or where you watch this message. It doesn't matter if it's on a Sunday, on a Tuesday, on a Thursday, or even on a Saturday morning before everybody gets up. All that matters is that the Word of God has reached your heart when it was most important. We're going to begin this message today by reading from Scripture. We're going to be reading from Mark chapter 2 verses 1 through 12. This is going to be our first miracle. This is a rather familiar passage. It contains the man, the paralyzed man who's carried on a mat by four individuals who is taken up to the roof. That roof is dug through and that man is lowered to Jesus. And the outcome is truly a miracle. So we're going to we're going to start this miracle, this miracle process, this new sermon series by looking at Mark chapter 2 verses 1 through 12 and we're going to be challenged to think about this question. What does it mean to care? So if you have a Bible nearby, I invite you to turn with me to Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and lowered that mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. You, who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts, and he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Which is, easy, which is easier to say to this paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Get up, take your mat, and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man, I tell you, get up. Take your mat and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. This is the word of God for the people of God. And all God's people said, Thanks be to God. The old man placed an order for one hamburger, french fries, and a drink. He unwrapped the plain hamburger and carefully cut it in half, placing one half in front of his wife. He then carefully counted out the fries one by one, dividing them into two piles and neatly placed one pile in front of his wife. He took a sip of the drink. His, his wife took a sip and then set the cup between them. 
As he began to eat his few bites of hamburger, the people around them were looking over and whispering. They were thinking, that poor old couple, all they can afford is one meal for the two of them. As the man began to eat his fries, a young man came to the table and politely offered to buy another meal for the old couple. The man politely declined, saying they were just fine and were used to sharing everything. People closer to the table noticed the little old lady hadn't eaten a bite. She sat there watching her husband eat and occasionally taking turns sipping the drink. Again, the young man came over and begged them to let him buy another meal for them. This time the old woman said, no thank you, we're used to sharing. Finally, as the old man finished and was wiping his face neatly with the napkin, the young man again came over to the little old lady who had yet to eat a single bite of food and asked, what is it you're waiting for? She answered, the tea. Sharing is caring. During life, we find ourselves caring for someone, caring for ourselves, and caring for something. We care about what we do, possibly what others do, how we feel, how others feel. We care about where we go and how we will get there. Let's face it, during life, we care about a lot of things and people. As we care about, as we care for these things and for others, we end up sharing with them and these things a part of us. We become concerned, we, we offer our interests, and sometimes we give a little bit of our time. But what does it mean to care? In English, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, care is defined as the provision of what is necessary for the health, welfare, maintenance, and protection of someone or something. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary also defines care as to feel concern or, or have interest, attach importance to something. In Greek, care is associated with words such as relief, hospitality, worry, and look after. So when someone says sharing is caring, or when you, when you show care to a friend, family member, loved one, or even a stranger, you are sharing with that person a moment of your time as you give them attention with hopes of offering some sort of relief, concern, and hospitality that will make them feel better or have a better outlook on life. Sharing is caring. And caring can change the world one heart at a time. Offering care can be seen as a miracle. Jesus cares for us as we care for others. From our scripture reading, the miracle, the miraculous works of Jesus are revealed to us through his willingness to heal a paralytic man and proclaim in front of scribes and Pharisees and all those gathered in Capernaum that this man's sins have been forgiven. Jesus, who wishes to remain secretive, who goes off to the wilderness to pray in solitude, and who in Mark chapter 1 tells the man of leprosy after being healed, see that you do not tell this to anyone, is publicly announcing that he has been given divine authority to heal, to forgive sins, to do things that other religious, religious figures can't do. Who can forgive sins but God alone or what is thought in the hearts of those watching Jesus perform this miracle? Jesus performs a miracle. He commands the paralytic man to take his mat and go home. Jesus could have ignored the paralytic man. Jesus could have gotten angry, upset at those carrying this man for destroying someone else's property. Jesus could have condemned those who allowed this intrusion upon his proclamation of good news. But Jesus didn't. Jesus gave his time and attention to this paralytic man, and by doing so, Jesus showed us all what it means to care for those in our life, whether we know them or not, whether they are perfect or not, whether they sin or ask for forgiveness, or whether or not they follow Christ. Jesus gave us an example of what it means to care for all people 
in our life. Offering care comes in many forms and practices to many kinds of people in many different places and spaces. The only limitation of care, however, is whether or not the one wanting to do the care follows through on what God is calling them to do. The story of the paralytic man calls us to put our willingness to care in action. It won't be easy, but it is necessary. And at times, we will need to take drastic actions, change our plans, and take up our own mat and walk. Are we willing to set aside our own plans for the sake of potentially making someone's day? Are we willing to do what a disciple is called to do? Are we willing to do, are we willing to care as a church? Christ cares for us so that we may care for others. The story or miracle of the paralyzed man begins by reminding us that Jesus, after healing a man of leprosy, returns to Capernaum where he recently healed the mother-in-law of Simon. The text says a few days later when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. We know that Jesus isn't from Capernaum. Mark tells us in chapter 1 that Jesus is from Nazareth. Jesus is labeled a Nazarene according to Matthew chapter 2, verse 23. But yet Capernaum is Jesus' home. Capernaum was a fishing village located on the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee. Matthew states Capernaum borders Zebulon and Nephthalim. Capernaum is considered home, the home of Jesus, because this is where Jesus finds rest. This is the town where Jesus begins his initial teachings about his father's kingdom, the need for repentance and hence reconciliation, and the sense that divine authority and justice is breaking through the heavens. This is Jesus' home because this is where Jesus is grounded. When you think of home, what do you think of? I often think of the saying that, you know, where your heart is, your home is also. Your heart is what grounds you to your home, to your beliefs, to your faith, to the people you love and care for. It's where things start. This is, Capernaum is the home of Jesus because this is where everything starts for Jesus, at least according to Mark. His ministry takes off in Capernaum, his home. Mark is reminding us that care isn't something we just do. It is, a, it is something that carries meaning and importance in our life, just like where we call home does. And it travels with us wherever we go. Care grounds us for what is to come, and what is to come are masses of people who need healing, help, and to be seen. Mark tells us, they, the masses of people, gathered in such large num numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them, since they could not get, get him to Jesus because of the crowd. They made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. Most houses in Lower Galilee, even the larger ones, could not accommodate more than a few dozen people. For Mark, the numbers are not important. The focus is on how people want to get to Jesus. People want to get to Jesus. People need to get to Jesus. You and I need to find ways and methods every day to get to Jesus. We all need to get to Jesus. Without Jesus in our life, we are nothing. We are nothing more than the cracking, than the creaking of a rusty gate, as Paul tells the people of Corinth. Without Jesus, we can't care for others the way he needs us to care for them. If we don't have Jesus in our life, we are simply nothing. We need Jesus in our life for that motivation, that encouragement, that spiritual uplifting that tells us every day that we are something in this world. We are something in this creation, and this something has been called to offer care to as many people as possible, to as many places and spaces as possible. The numbers are important, but not at first. What's important is how that care is put into action. 
going back to the house, it seems as if his house becomes a hospital. Remember the home of Comper the home of Jesus, right? Or the possibly the house of Simon. So it seems as if his house becomes a hospital, a place of healing and hospitality. In a recent song published by Matthew West, West wrote, but didn't you say church should be more like a hospital? Jesus, Jesus' home becomes a place for the sick, a, rest, a resting place for the tired and weary, a healing place for the injured, and a sacred space for the lost. Jesus' home models what every church should be like. Every church should be a hospital because everyone that walks through its doors needs to be healed. But are we the church that God has called us to be? Are, are people coming here to be healed? Are people coming to your church to be healed, to seek refuge, to seek renewal? Or are they just coming because they're, that's part of their routine? Is a church a hospital for all people? A home where people want to come to be healed. To find ways to be healed. The story tells us that four people coming carrying this paralytic man on a mat and lifted him up to the roof because there was no other way to get to Jesus through the many people. I don't, I don't know who these bed bearers are, these four individuals. They could be friends, relatives, servants, or slaves. Or simply strangers. They could be both men and women. We can, we can speculate who they might be, but we do know that they did whatever they could to get that paralyzed man to Jesus. Mark tells us they dug through the muddy roof while Luke replaces the mud roof with tile. It doesn't matter what the roof was made of. What matters is the, the effort that was put forth to offer this man as much care as possible. Remember what I said at the very beginning, offering care will sometimes cause us to do drastic actions, to go beyond our comfort zone, to do things that we normally wouldn't do. These four individuals are telling us that message just through their actions. This scene sheds light on the words of Paul who wrote in Galatians chapter 6 verses 1 through 2. Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in sin, you who live by spirit should restore that person gently. But watch yourselves, or you also may be tempted, carrying each other's burdens. And in this way, you will, you will fulfill the law of Christ. End of quote. As with bearing the burdens of another, we can see the paralyzed man as a burden. But better, we can see him as a blessing, since by carrying him, those who bear him up are shown to be models of faith. This particular scene teaches us that to offer the care of Jesus means that we, do, that we do so with compassion, with love, with kindness, with generosity. By practicing the fruit of the Spirit, we must be willing to tear down whatever barrier is keeping us from being able to bring healing to the people. If we want to care like Jesus cares, then we have to take risks and perform drastic actions. We have to do what we can as a disciple and as a church to bring people to Jesus. But are we doing that? Because of the actions and risks of the four persons, Jesus saw their faith. The Greek term translated faith is pistis, and it also means trust. Jesus saw their faith and trust in their own ability to get the paralyzed man to him. They may, have, they may well have had faith and trust in themselves to perform this action. They managed to carry the paralyzed man safely without dropping him. Got him up to the rooftop, got him down through the hole they dug and lowered him safely to the ground. They must have some sort of trust in themselves in order to perform such a, a ridiculous task that no one else wanted to do. They got this paralyzed man to Jesus. Because of their actions, their willingness to put this man before themselves, Jesus saw their faith, and this man was not only healed, but his sins were forgiven. This man was healed inside out, something that we all need to do every day. We all need to pray, Lord Jesus, please heal me from my sins. Remove my sins, Lord, and allow those sins, when they're removed, to be replaced by strength so that I can walk and do your will. 
Just like the paralyzed man, we all need to be healed from the inside out. The actions, faith, and trust of these four individuals, friends, family members, servants, slaves, or strangers, reminds me of a quote from scholar and theologian Henry Nouwen. This quote isn't the most cheerful or even the most uplifting. As a matter of fact, it is rather daunting and sad. However, the ending message is filled with hope and care. The ending message reminds us all of how powerful and life-saving caring for someone can be. Henry Nouwen, from his book, The Wounded Healer, Ministry in Contemporary Society, states, and I quote, Thousands of people commit suicide because there is nobody waiting for them tomorrow. There is no reason to live if there is nobody to live for. But when someone says to a fellow human being, I will not let you go. I am going to be here tomorrow waiting for you and I expect you not to disappoint me. Then tomorrow is no longer an endless dark tunnel. It becomes flesh and blood in the form of the brother or sister who is waiting for you. End of quote. Who are you being called to be there for? Who needs care in your life? Who needs to know that they are going to be there tomorrow? That you are going to be there tomorrow? Caring is more than a simple act. It is a God-given gift that can save someone's life, bring comfort to the sick, strength to the weak, and healing to the hurting. When we care, we find ourselves being able to say, take up your mat and walk. When we care, we become a miracle. When we care, we become who Christ has called us to be. When we care as a church, we truly become a hospital where everybody wants to go to because they know that they're going to be healed and saved. Mark concludes the story after pointing out that Jesus is questioned by the scribes and Pharisees, who forgives sins but God alone? by telling us that the paralyzed man had been healed and cared for. Mark writes when quoting Jesus, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in, in full view of them all, all who were there. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. The miracle of the paralyzed man confirms Jesus' ability to forgive sins. It amazes the crowd, and it prompts giving thanks to God, and it invites us to re-examine what we mean when we say sharing is caring. Caring is not just something we are told to do, it is something that we should want to do, that we need to do, that we strive to do. Caring is about putting others first, about taking risks, about engaging in drastic actions at times, and about doing everything we can in the moment to bring peace and comfort to those around us as we lead them to Christ. If we take time to care like Jesus cares, with love, compassion, kindness, and generosity, and putting others first, we too can perform miracles or perhaps become a miracle for someone in our life. The paralyzed man's identity was changed. He was brought to Jesus by caregivers, but leaves on his own. He came in through the roof, but walked out the door. The mat that, the mat that he held that held him up is now the mat that he holds. And he came in with sins of whatever sort, but is now forgiven. It's amazing to think about how a simple act of care can change someone's life and possibly save their life. Christ cares for us so that we know what it is like to care for others. What can you do to care for others more? How can you show others that, that you care for them? How can this church, how can your church be a place associated with acts of care and kindness where all want to come to be healed? The time has come to pick up your mat so that you can walk to others who need to know that they too can pick up their mat and walk. How do you show care for those in your life? How are you going to care 
for others the way Jesus has cared for you. Let us pray. Dear Jesus, help us to be like one of the four individuals carrying the mat of the paralyzed man. Guide our hearts to offer support and care to those in our life. Help us to be the caring people and church that you have called us to be. Allow us to be a miracle for your people. Amen. If I can offer you a sermon takeaway, it's simply this. Sharing is caring. Jesus offers us care so that we know, so that we understand, so that we bet, so that we better, so that we have better instructions to care as as Jesus would want us to care. We shouldn't care simply because we need to. We need to care because we want to. Because that is what this world needs and that is what Jesus needs us to do. As we care, we need to pray that that person strive to know Jesus a little bit more. We all need to get to Jesus. We all need to strive to be like Jesus. We all need to do what Christ has called us to do to make sure that this world is continuously taking one step closer to Jesus. And we can do that if we take time to care for those in our life. And when we care, we need to be reminded that caring is not something that is always going to be simple. It can be small, it can be great, it can be something in between. It can be challenging, it can be tough, it can be easy. No matter what care looks like, for all of us, we need to figure out how to, way to exercise that care just a little bit more. And as we care, we're going to be called to take drastic actions. We're going to be challenged. We're going to, we're going to have to take risks. We're going to have to look around and ask ourselves, you know, what, what can I do to care more? How can our churches care more? How can the care of our church, of the congregation, go outside of its doors so that it invites others to come through those doors? You know, I pray every day that there is an opportunity where people will have to dig through the roof of our churches to get to us because there's so many people outside listening to our messages, wanting to be saved, wanting to be healed, wanting to experience the word of God. When we care, a miracle can happen. When you care, life can be saved. And when a church cares, we see what it's like to fully live out being called the body of Christ. The time has come to care and to exercise that care and to bring others to Christ. And you can do it because you have Christ in your heart. The story of the paralyzed man is not just about revealing Jesus as a miracle worker and doer. It is also about calling all of us to do what Jesus needs us to do. And Jesus needs us to care for those in our life, in our church, and in our community with love, compassion, kindness, and generosity. May God bless you with strength and faith and trust to care as Christ has cared for you. Go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit as you become a caring miracle for many in this life. And all God's people said, Amen, Amen, Amen. May God bless you and may God's love and light shine down upon you as you continue to be the disciple that he has called you to be. And may you find strength and encouragement to care the way Jesus has cared for you, for others in your life. God bless you until we meet again.